Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Nathan and today we are doing our second class overview for Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition and today we're going to be covering the Barbarian class. Here is our agenda for today. I'll talk about the uh, kind of an overview of the class and what their role is. Importantly, uh, we're just talking about the core class and not any of the subclasses in particular in this video. Um, I'll go through all the all of the class features from level 1 to 20. I'll talk a little bit about multi-classing the barbarian and then we will summarize and i'll kind of give the core class some ratings here importantly the subclasses will modify kind of what the core class does and we'll talk about those subclasses in future videos again the goal of this video is just to cover and kind of give an overview of what the core class is so class overview and role what is the, the barbarian good at now the main thing uh, about the barbarian is they are a strength-based martial character they are intended to run in and chop people up with big weapons, and that this is the kind of the way that their class is built. If I was going to give them kind of a short word about what their role is in the party, they are a frontline bruiser. They are up, um, they want to be up in the faces of their enemies, and they're going to dish out damage and take damage. Uh, importantly, they get an extra skill proficiency at level 3 and level 10. Um, which kind of makes them a little bit more well-rounded, but the the issue we have here is while we get more skill proficiencies, they're off the Barbarian skill list, which isn't exactly the best, but they do have more skills than a typical class that isn't a skill class. So, class features. At level 1, uh, Barbarians have a D12 hit dice. This is the biggest hit dice in the game, and as such, Barbarians will generally have more hit points than any other class. They are proficient in light armor, medium armor, and shields. They're proficient in simple and martial weapons, and they are not proficient with any tools. They are proficient in strength and constitution saves. Um, and you know, these uh, constitution saves are normally something a caster likes, but for barbarians in particular, this is actually important with some of their later class features. As for their skills, they get to pick two skills off the following list. Animal handling, athletics, intimidation, nature, perception, and survival. Now there are six skills there, and eventually barbarians will actually get to be in proficient in four out of six of those. Um, some of those are quite useful. Uh, some of those are less useful, again, depending on your campaign. Now, as for other features that barbarians get at level one, they get rage. And rage is really the core thing that barbarians are all about. Um, and it's really kind of what enables the class to work. So when you rage, it takes a bonus action to activate, and importantly, you can't get any benefits from rage if you're wearing heavy armor. So while barbarians don't normally have heavy armor proficiency, um, multi-classing, say, a barbarian with a fighter who might get heavy armor prof proficiency, you wouldn't be able to uh, benefit from rage while you're wearing heavy armor. Now, when you're raging, you get advantage on strength checks and strength saving throws. So this could be uh, athletics checks to, say, grapple an enemy or a strength check to avoid being knocked prone by a wolf, that kind of thing. And when you're making a melee weapon attack using strength, you get a bonus to your damage rolls. This scales with your levels. Uh, at this level, it is two. And you also get resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage, regardless of whether or not it's magical. Um, and importantly, if you're able to cast spells, you can't concentrate or cast them while you're raging. So no spell casting while you're raging. And uh, your rage lasts for a minute. Uh, it ends early if you're knocked unconscious or if your turn ends and you haven't attacked a hostile creature uh, since your last turn or taken damage since then. And you can also choose to end your rage as a bonus action. Now, at this level, we can rage twice per long rest. So two combat, potentially two, two, two combat encounters per long rest where we can kind of use our core feature. Uh, also at this level, barbarians get unarmored defense. And this says that when we're not wearing any armor, we can use both our dexterity and our constitution modifier to add to our armor class. So our armor class will be 10 plus our dex plus our constitution. Now, there's some interesting things here. Um, one of the things that is cool about Barbarians is the Rage is a fun and powerful mechanic, but the fact that it's limited um, uses per long rest means that if you don't have it, you kind of don't feel like a Barbarian. Um, and then Unarmored Defense uh, is honestly a little bit of a trap feature and should be used more for flavor. One of the things with 
Barbarian is, uh, because they're proficient with medium armor, you can get a better ar uh, armor class with, you know, having 14 dexterity and medium armor, and then using your limited ability score increases to bump your strength and get weapon feats. So unless uh, you are in a specific situation where you're not able to use armor, like say, you know, you got ambushed and haven't put your armor on, or you're... Um, you were thrown in prison and your armor was taken away, you're probably not going to be using unarmored defense for your armor class just because wearing armor is better. Importantly, you can still use a shield and benefit from your unarm unarmored defense, um, and that is an option for barbarians. Now, at level 2, barbarians get some more of their key features, namely reckless attack and danger sense. So, reckless attack, uh, what this does is... When we make our first attack on each turn, we can decide um, to make that attack recklessly. And if we do, we get advantage for all of our attacks on this turn, as so long as we're using, uh, they are melee weapon attacks using strength. And uh, if we do that, attacks against us have uh, advantage until our next turn. So again, the important thing here is that you know, we have we get a bonus to our damage rolls if we're using strength from rage, and we can only gain the advantage from reckless attack if we're making melee attacks with strength. So the general thing that barbarians like to do is you rage and then you recklessly attack, and sure enemies can hit you, but you'll have resistance to most of the damage, and this is kind of the way that they play out. You're going to dish out more damage than you take, so the enemies should die before you do. Uh, Danger Sense, what this does is it gives us advantage on dexterity saves against um, effects that we can see, such as traps or spells, and it, it works as long as we're not blinded, deafened, or incapacitated. And this helps the Barbarian be a little more resilient against those kinds of things, um, and works kind of well with the Rage as another way of reducing the damage. Importantly, you're not proficient in dexterity saves, nor do Barbarians typically have very high dexterity usually not above 14. And so uh, you still might fail um, some of those harder deck saves, but this will make that a little bit less common. Now, at level three, uh, barbarians get a couple of key things. First, they get primal knowledge. This is a feature that gives them proficiency and additional skill off the barbarian skill list. Now, they also get their primal path, their subclass here at level three. And at this level, all the subclasses kind of get their main defining features. And uh, while they are pretty varied, uh, these features typically modify or improve your rage in some way and oftentimes require you to be raging to actually do anything. Now, there are a lot of uh, subclasses that have been presented in official content. From the Player's Handbook, we have the Berserker and the Totem Warrior. The Berserker is generally just about being angry, and the Totem Warrior is kind of about manifesting guardian spirits. Um, usually associated with animals and taking on some of their aspects while you're raging. From Xenathar's Guide to Everything, we got the Ancestral Guardian, the Storm Herald, and the Zealot. The Ancestral Guardian kind of manifests the spirits of their ancestors and uses them to protect their allies. The Storm Herald kind of manifests elemental powers when they rage. And the Zealot is like a zealous warrior of the gods who is extra hard to kill and does more damage when they rage. And then from Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, we got the Beast Barbarian and the Wild Magic Barbarian. The Beast Barbarian, when they rage, they like manifest animalistic natural weapons like claws or a fanged maw or a spiky tail, that kind of thing. The Wild Magic Barbarian unleashes bursts of uncontrolled magic when they rage. And then from the most recent book, uh, Glory of the Giants, we got the Giant's Barbarian, who gets really big and gets some extra damage and other benefits when they rage. Also at this level, our rages per long rest increase from two to three. And this is really important because again, when you're a barbarian and you're not able to rage, a lot of the features of your class don't work. So being able to use them more often um, and, and for more fights is really important. And having that third long rest here feels, that third rage here feels really good. At level four, bar barbarians get their first ability score increase or feat and they follow the regular ability score increase schedule. So they've got a total of five across their career at levels four, eight, 12, 16, and 19. Now, importantly on barbarians, because they are marshals, you typically want to invest at least one, if not two feats into um, kind of weapon feats and not stats. So usually the 
the mainstream kind of barbarian build is you're going to be using a two-handed heavy weapon, um, maybe a polearm. So if you're going to be using a heavy weapon, you usually get the great weapon master feat because you can kind of offset that minus five penalty to attack for plus 10 damage by using reckless attack to get advantage on all of your attacks. And if you are going the polearm route, uh, that lets you make a bonus action attack with the haft of your polearm, and that can also benefit from Great Weapon Master. So typically, you're going to be spending two feats on uh, Great Weapon Master and Polearm Master, or, or at least one on Great Weapon Master, and then probably another couple of feats to increase your strength to 20, and that will leave you with one or two feats left to maybe bump your constitution or your dexterity if you really want to invest into that unarmored stuff, or something else. And for this reason, uh, a lot of um, barbarians like to be a either a custom lineage or a variant human just to get access to that feat at level 1 so they can have their wep both their weapon feats up as soon as possible. Now, at level 5, barbarians get uh, their extra attack feature. As a marshal, this is what almost all of them get at level 5, and this means that when you attack, uh, with the attack action on your turn, you can attack twice instead of once. Barbarians also get five, uh, fast movement here, and what this does is while you're not wearing heavy armor, your movement speed increases by 10 feet. And you're probably not going to be wearing heavy armor anyway as a barbarian, just because you want to be able to benefit from rage. Um, so again, barbarians are heavily restricted. Do not wear heavy armor in this area. Now, at level 6, Barbarians get their next path feature, and these vary widely. Uh, there isn't really a consistent theme across these, but they are typically defensive or utility focused. A few of them will get small offensive uh, bumps at this level. And at level 6, their Rage's Prolonged Rest increases from 3 to 4. And again, having more Rages is great because now it means we can be a Barbarian more often. <laughs> At level 7, Barbarians get Feral Instinct and Instinctive Pounce. What Feral Instinct does is it gives us advantage on initiative rolls, and it makes it so that if we are surprised, um, we uh, uh, can actually act normally on our first turn so long as we immediately enter our rage. And this is really nice. Uh, one of the things that Barbarians want to do is they want to go first, they want to close the distance, and they want to hit hard. And speaking of closing the distance, what Instinctive Pounce does is as part of the bonus action to activate our Rage, we can move up to half of our speed. So this is a 50% speed increase. If you're a typical race that has a 30-foot speed base at this point, you would have a 40-foot speed because of fast movement from level 5. And so on your first turn, you could potentially Rage, move 20 feet, use your movement to move another 40 feet, and close potentially 60 feet which should get you into range in most encounters. At level 8, Barbarians get their next ability score increase or feat, and typically, uh, you know, if you're go going that Polar Master route with the two-handed Heavy Glaive or Halberd, you will have finished that here, or if you're the Variant Human and Custom Lineage, uh, you, you will have finished that at level 4, and you're going to be bumping Strength here. But again, we're following the regular feat schedule for most classes. At level 9, Barbarians get the brutal, the brutal Critical feature, and what this does is when we get a crit, we can roll one additional weapon dice when, when determining the damage. So what this means, let's say that you are using um, a Great Axe, which has a uh, damage dice of 1d12. When you get a crit, you normally get to add another d12, so 2d12, but because of Brutal, of brutal Critical, we now get to add a third d12. So when we get that crit, it's now going to be 3d12 instead of 2d12. Now, this is uh, an okay feature, um, but it's actually not that significant of a damage boost. Um, even when we're making a reckless attack, our base critical chance is going to be just under 10%, and the expected value of an additional d12 is about 6.5 damage. So if you factor that together, this is an increase of about 0.6 damage per hit. Um, which is not all that much. Um, and while it is fun to roll more dice when you get a crit, this is not super impactful in terms of our damage output. Now, importantly, at this level, the bonus damage that we get on hit when we're, when we're making attacks during ra our rage increases from 2 to 3. And this is more significant than brutal critical in terms of our damage output. 
At level 10, we get another path feature. Uh, these, again, vary widely. Um, they're typically some kind of limited use active ability. A lot of them are like battle cries and that kind of thing that'll buff your allies or debuff your enemies. Um, and these are usually not, not, not too bad. Uh, but again, they vary widely based on the subclass. We also get a second skill from Primal Knowledge here. So at this point, we will be proficient in four out of the six skills on our class list. At level 11, we get the Relentless Rage feature. And what this does is um, if we drop to hero, we drop to zero hit points while we're raging and we don't die outright. So you die outright if you take um, at least, I believe it's half your health in raw damage, like into the negative. So if we don't die outright as a result of dropping to zero hit points, we can make a DC 10 constitution save. And if we succeed, we drop to one hit point instead. And each time we use this feature after the first, the DC increases by five. And when we finish a short or long rest, the DC decreases back to 10. So this is a pretty cool feature. It means that basically while you're raging, it can be very difficult for you to die. Um, because we're proficient in constitution saves, uh, that helps a lot here. Um, yeah, again, very interesting. Uh, and if you're taking a lot of small hits and are very low, you could potentially uh, get knocked out pretty quickly. But generally speaking, this should save you maybe one or two times um, and uh, can potentially keep you in combat for that extra turn or two. Cool feature, um, but... Again, not like overwhelmingly powerful, but it is good. At level 12, we get our third ability score increase or feat. And at this point, most barbarians will probably be uh, bumping their strength if it's not capped already. And our rages per long rest increases from four to five. Uh, at most tables, this is probably going to be enough to cover all of your combat encounters on a given day, uh, depending on how your DM handles your barbarian. Uh, if they like crowd control you and you lose rage because of that, uh, that can kind of suck. And uh, you know you have some backup rages just in case. At level 13, the only thing that barbarians get is our brutal, brutal critical feature now gives us two extra damage dice. So uh, you know, let's again say that we're using that great ax and we get a crit. We now get to roll 4d12 instead of 3d12 um, that we would have had from just the level 9 version. And again, this is an increase in our uh, damage per hit of about 0.6 in this case. So we've gotten 1.2 extra damage per hit, which is, again, that's assuming we're using Reckless Attack, and this is, you know, less damage than our uh, Rage bonus damage. So again, not super powerful, but it is fun when you do get those crits. At level 14, we get our... Uh, our last path feature, the capstone of our subclass. And again, these vary widely. They are usually all quite powerful, um, but almost all of them usually involve raging. So as we've kind of said throughout the video, if you're not able to rage, most of the features of your class and your subclass don't work. Um, now, at this level, we should have enough rages that we can rage all the time. Um, and these capstones are typically pretty powerful and pretty fun. At level 15, we get the Relentless Rage feature, or, uh, well, excuse me, this is Persistent Rage. And what Persistent Rage does is our rage only ends early if we fall unconscious or we choose to end it. So that means that if we get crowd controlled and can't attack or don't take any damage, we still get to keep raging. And this is a really nice thing to have because it means that those rages are basically going to last all the encounters all the time. At level 16, we get our fourth ability score increase or feat. Uh, and if your strength wasn't capped, uh, it should be capped now. And other than that, you're probably going to be bumping constitution. Uh, and our rage damage bonus increases for the last time from three to four. And, you know, we are doing more bonus damage with this than we are getting from Brutal Critical. And speaking of Brutal, Crit of Brutal Critical, it gets its last increase to three extra damage dice at this point. So our crit with our great axe would be doing 5d12 damage, which again, that is very fun to, to roll all those dice when you get a crit, but the chances of it, even with a reckless attack, are just under 10%. Our rages per long rest increase from 5 to 6, and at this point, you will probably pretty easily be able to rage all the time, thanks to persistent rage and having 6 rages. 
At level 18, we get the Indomitable Might feature. And what this does is if our total for a strength check is less than our strength score, we can use our score in place of the total. Uh, most barbarians will probably have their strength score capped at 20 at this point, which means that if you roll less than a 20 total on any strength check, whether uh, you know that's an athletics check or uh, something to climb or that kind of thing, we can use a total of 20 instead. Very powerful. It should make your barbarian very consistent at lifting doors and all that kind of things. And importantly, this actually like kind of prevents you from getting a natural one because you can just use a raw total of 20 instead. Depends on how your DM rules nat ones on skill checks, um, but it should keep you from getting and failing anything that you should be able to do. At level 19, we get our last ability score increase or feat, and this will probably be bumping constitution for a reason I'm going to talk about now with the level 20 capstone. And level 20 capstone is called Primal Champion. So if you get manage to get to level 20 in Barbarian, you get plus 40 your strength and plus 40 your constitution, and your maximum for these stats is now 24. Um, this is a point where potentially you might actually use unarmored defense. Uh, if you have if you manage to cap all three of strength, constitution, and dexterity before you, you got this, you would have uh, an armor class of 22 without doing anything. Um, but importantly, this will just give you a whole bunch of health. Um, you know, getting plus two to your constitution modifier will give you at least, well, it'll give you an additional 40 hit points. Um, and because of our indomitable might, the minimum that we can get on any strength check, assuming we'd already capped our strength score uh, b before getting this, is going to be 24. We also get unlimited rages um, now. There's no limit on them. So in theory, you could be raging the entire time that you're awake. Um, thanks to having unlimited rages and persistent rage with your rage not ending. So overall, pretty cool. Um, and uh, this is, you know, if you're if you manage to get to level 20 as a barbarian, this is actually a pretty nice capstone, although it's not incredibly powerful compared to some of the other class capstones out there. Now, let's talk about multi-classing the barbarian. In terms of uh, minimum Stats required, you need at least 13 strength to multi-class into Barbarian or multi-class out of Barbarian. Uh, if you take a, a level in Barbarian and it's not your first class, you get proficiency with shields, simple weapons, and martial weapons. Importantly, it doesn't give you any armor proficiencies. So if you want to, you know, uh, have armor and be a little bit of a Barbarian and mix with another class that doesn't normally get armor, you'll probably want to take your first level as Barbarian to get the uh, medium armor proficient. Uh, now, generally speaking, in my opinion, I think that Barbarian goes best with Fighter and Rogue. Now, these are other martial classes, and I'll explain why. So, in, in terms of Fighter, um, this build will probably end up being mostly Fighter, and I think a lot of these builds don't really want more than five or six levels in Barbarian. And specifically, this is because uh, Barbarians don't scale well in terms of damage after they get extra attack and maybe that second class feature. And we kind of saw that as we went through the cl class features. The only real things that we got to increase our damage were um, Brutal Critical, which is not significant, and uh, that extra damage on our Rage, which did not bump up that much. So. Uh, if you multi-class with Fighter, a Fighter can use a little bit of Barbarian to get Rage and Reckless Attack, and potentially a subclass. And uh, then they just wear Medium Armor, and they get to have the all the benefits of being a Barbarian in terms of the damage output without having to, to worry about the lack of scaling at the top end. Now, I want to talk about the Rogue multi-class, because this is actually one that is very, very interesting and really cool. So. Uh, the requirements for rogues to sneak attack are that you are using a finesse weapon or a ranged weapon, but there's no requirement that you have to use your dexterity. So a barbarian attacking with a finesse weapon, like a rapier in one hand, using strength, could still qualify for sneak attack. And because a barbarian can recklessly attack, so long as they're making attacks with their strength and a melee weapon, they can make all those attacks with advantage, which means you can always apply sneak attack. So there's actually a pretty cool build where you you are you start out with five or six levels in barbarian, 
you use strength, you use the medium armor, probably a shield and a rapier, and then you go rogue the rest of the way. And you can stack the rogue sneak attack damage on top of the uh, um, extra attack that you get out of Barbarian, and rogue also gives you a whole bunch of, uh, of utility and skills that Barbarians normally lack. Now, Barbarian can also work pretty well with any kind of melee-focused half-caster class, including Artificer, Paladin, and Ranger. Um, if you're doing these, again, you're going to be using medium armor. Um, you're going to be strength primary because you need to have that in order to benefit from rage and reckless attack. But all three of these um, half-caster classes can do that. And in terms of their spells, as long as you focus on kind of out-of-combat utility or spells that don't require concentration, that are like a one-time buff, um, these can all, you can still benefit from these while you're raging. Um, I would be, uh, you know, it, 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 would be, it would be bad not to mention a few other more niche things here that barbarians can multi-class with. One of the classic ones is to multi-class with Moon Druid. Um, in this case, you shapeshift into a, be into a beast and then you rage. And so you can stat use the rage damage reduction with all of the extra hit points that you get from the wild shape to become very, very tanky. Um, and this build is actually pretty fun and pretty powerful at low levels, um, but it starts to deal with some scaling issues as you get to high levels, especially because raging blocks you from concentrating, which is one of the main things that actually druids need to do in order to get the most out of their wild shape. You can also do, um, do some interesting things with Pact of the Blade Warlocks with Barbarian. Again, using spells that don't require concentration, like Armor of Agathis or Fire Shield, even out of Fiend. Warlock to do some interesting things with raid. Now, let's go into our summary and ratings. What do I give the Barbarian in terms of their offensive rating? And I give them a three stars out of five. Now, this requires some explanation because at low levels, particularly like once you get to level five, level 10, um, Barbarians are actually one of the best damage dealing classes in the game. Uh, they get extra attack. Uh, they have advantage on all their attacks without really needing to do anything thanks to reckless attack. Uh, you just need to make sure, you know, let the enemies hit you a little easier. Um, but the reason that they're not a five stars, in my opinion, is because of the lack of high, uh, like, after you are level five, you basically don't get anything that really helps your offense in any significant way. So they peak early and then they plateau really, really hard. Um, and so, in my opinion, um, this drops them down. Uh, and this is an another reason why a lot of builds that use Barbarian will multi-class away after level 5 or 6, and uh, you use another class for most of the levels simply because of the lack of scaling. So, if I was, you know, if this was just low levels, like, say, 10 and under, they are a five-star offensive class, but in the overall grand scheme of things, because of the lack of scaling, I'm giving stars. Now, defense, I give the Barbarian, again, a three out of five here, and this may surprise some people um, because, you know, you've got the most hit points in the game, you've got resistance to all damage, doesn't that make you very tanky? And the answer is yes, but actually no, um, and the reason for this is it's actually generally speaking uh, better to not get hit at all than to get hit for a little bit of damage. If you take a character with a high armor class and less hit points and uh, versus a barbarian who has a lower armor class gets hit pretty much all the time thanks to recklessly attacking even though they have damage resistance uh, to most of this damage thanks to rage the barbarian is actually going to uh, take more damage overall and die quicker. Um, they are somewhat resilient against, you know, things like fireballs and that kind of thing, thanks to danger sense, but they don't have, they're not proficient in dex saves, so they're still going to take a lot of damage from these. And then because of the way barbarians do their stats, they're usually really vulnerable to any kind of spell that targets intelligence, wisdom, or charisma saves. And so you're not very durable against spells, and you get chipped down pretty hard, especially if you get swarmed. So I don't think... Uh, at least with the base class features of the Barbarian, they're actually a very good defensive class, at least not on the levels of Artificer that we saw uh, in our last one. Now, Control. I give the Barbarian a 2 out of 5 here. Um, the reason that they're not a 1 out of 5 is that Barbarians are actually very effective grapplers. 
because they get advantage on strength checks while raging, uh, it's pretty easy for a, a barbarian to grapple their target. Now, the reason uh, you know they're not higher because grappling, while it does provide some uh, measure of control, especially against melee enemies, uh, unless you are some specific races, um, grappling will severely gimp your damage and potentially defensive abilities. So again, better than nothing, but not necessarily uh, a very good controller. Now, if we talk about support abilities, barbarians get a one out of five. This is my lowest possible rating. Uh, and this is because um, the core bar barbarian class basically has nothing that helps your allies. And uh, they are mainly a, you know, in your face damage dealer. And this shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone. Now, skills, I give the, the barbarian a two out of five here. And this is because they get a couple of extra skills from Primal Knowledge. Uh, if they weren't for that, they would only have two skills from their class. And, uh, you know, th their skill list, some of them are good. A lot of them are very niche. Um, and so be you get a few extra skills, which is better than nothing. But there's nothing special here in terms of what their skills are. Finally, complexity. And this is a category where a five star rating means the class is very complex and could potentially be very difficult to pilot. And a one means it's very easy. And yes, barbarians are a one. They are not really that complicated of a class. What you do with a barbarian is you rage and you run up and you smack things. Uh, so uh, that's kind of how I rate the barbarian. Again, a pretty simple class. The goal is to run in and hit things. Um, but the lack of high level scaling and how um, they their kind of hit points function in actual play um, means they're not necessarily as good in practice as they might look in paper in terms of both offense and defense, at least in my opinion. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this uh, kind of overview of the, the, the Barbarian. Our next class overview will be on the Bard, and I hope to see you then.